Hello, welcome back. Close it in on the final stages of the tour. Of course, as soon as I finish this, then we move on to the women, bringing back the Tour de France for the women, new name for it, the Tour de France film. So um, I'll be painting that. It's actually gonna be a tough day on Sunday because I get to do both the final day of the men and the first day of the women. That'll be a long day. But uh, I'm very, very excited to start painting the women. Um, it's been a long time coming. It was a lot of work to make it happen. I am friendly with, friend would be too strong of a word, although I do admire Catherine Bertine, who's very instrumental in getting this to happen, starting with La Course, former professional racer, now a great author. You need to check out her book. Um, and I'll put, a, I'll put the name of it and I'll spell her name for you if I remember to do that when I post this. But her book is um, Stand. And she's been a longtime advocate for equality for women and women cycling, in cycling in general. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it's a late start today, so you're getting a little bit of the sunlight playing through the side window here. Normally, I'm finished painting by now, but you know, life takes over. So this is a late breakaway, trying to stay away on a, mount, on a uh, sprint stage, so highly, highly unlikely they'll do it. But none of them are sprinters, so they have no chance of winning if they stay in the Belladon. <clears throat> so a very slim chance is better than none. On the front is Fred Wright taking a look back at um, to see the Peloton, which is closing in. They are only. Um, like 14 seconds back, and they've got a roughly seven, eight kilometers to race. Sorry, I don't know why my phone's making noise. So it's been interesting. We've had um, a couple groups off the front or a couple riders off the front. This is a new group, but Earlier it was a rider from Trek Segafredo and a rider from Bahrain Victorious. And now it is again. Different riders, as I said. Stoyven is the one I'm drawing right now from Trek Segafredo. Alexa Gugard in the middle for B and B. Um, and as I said, Fred Wright for Bahrain Victorious. So when composing a piece, one of the things you can do, and Toulouse Lautrec was particularly good at this, was using the people in the painting, the, the direction they're looking is an excellent way to direct the viewer's eye to where you want them to go. So it's not uncommon to see in many paintings a face on the very edge of the painting looking back into the painting and that um, helps drive the viewer's eye back into the painting. So it's just a little compositional technique that can make your painting just that much more engaging. Some of the fans, so you can see that they're all looking back the other way and that's because these writers have gone by and they've spun their heads back around to see the approaching peloton. Also, you can see these old lane markings are helpful. <clears throat> I don't know, can you hear my voice being scratchy? So just getting the last couple of little pieces of detail here. 
and then I'll switch over to lay it in the color. So that's the ink drawing. All this I can know, they are coming. So it's been quite a long tour. We're into the, um, well, tomorrow will be what, what they call the last competitive stage of the tour. So it is um, tradition not to really race on the last day until they get onto the Champs-Élysées. And at that point, it's where the sprinters take over and the people who want to win on the Champs, and it's really a sprint stage at that point. But, you know, this race has gone not to script in many ways. In fact, I painted earlier the painting you can see right here. Um, Tadega, Tadega, however you say his name, Tade, the guy in second place actually had a little dig and went on the offensive, which I don't know if there was crossers. I think he just, you know, thought he'd give it a shot. Why not? I don't think he was at all expected it would work, but by going, you know, there was a chance, just as these guys went with a slim chance, you know, there was a chance that nobody would react and he could get a gap. It was way too far out to think that there wouldn't be a reaction from the yellow jersey. So I'm kind of thinking it was just, you know, hey, there's daylight. There's a couple guys going up the road. I'm going to go with them. Of course, the other guys probably were less than happy. <laughs> they thought maybe they had a chance for a breakaway, but as soon as the guys in second place on GC joined them, they knew they were doomed. If I were them, I just would have sat up, let him go back and go again. They didn't get the chance. It's really tough to get into a break. So working my way through the warm colors, again, drawing your eye back. So you've sort of got this sweep, and that's what this does. It helps continue that sweep. You know, so you're looking for pieces of the image that will help your painting be more dynamic. I'm not saying make up things, but utilize what's there. So now I'm just going to lay in the reds and then you'll work my way through the colors of these jerseys. And right now that red is <clears throat> not very strong so you can see I just picked up more pigment on my brush and I can drag that back in. And because everything is already wet, you're know, not really seeing any brush strokes. And now I'll move over. So what, you know, the caravan that goes ahead of the race gives out all these wonderful souvenirs tossed from These basically floats, for lack of a better word, um, from these vehicles that precede the race. And it's sort of like, you know, Mardi Gras throwing beads and fans doing everything they can to get people to throw them to them. And apparently, the single biggest prize given out is these polka dot t shirts. The polka dot jersey that Climbers jersey the Malier Bois are given out by a local is sponsored by a local grocery store. I don't like that blue. So I'm gonna pick it back up. Because this blue that Bahrain uses is much brighter. So see now I've just switched that and I was able to pick it up. 
by just putting more water and dragging the brush. They also wear these brilliant blue socks. And now we'll go straight to this sort of turquoisey blue. of um, B and B hotels. Yeah, that seems about right. Now this time I have the opposite problem. It's too saturated. And this you know, turquoise against the red, now, I mean, those are the real colors. But it's nice when you can es exploit local color to um, local color being the color the object actually is. You can exploit that to help with your color composition. All right, sorry, I'm trying to talk and paint, which is always a challenge for me anyway. So now I'm going to get this, I'm sort of building this black, but first time, it's this dark navy of Trek Sega Fredo and Stoyben's kit. much detail there. You can use that for these sunglasses. Oh, okay, that's his, oh here, that's his leg. <laughs> I've got things a little confused here. Oh well. That's one of the things about using the watercolors, it can be a lot more gestural, a lot looser. And therefore, I don't need to know exactly where everything goes. It is a gestural sketch, and these things are played. So I don't think I've talked about how I do these. So I'm watching the race as close to live as possible. Today uh, wasn't possible to be all that live. But, um, and as I see something that intrigues me or makes a strong image or tells the story of the racing, I will hit pause and then paint the image and then move on watching. So while the race has for today ended some time ago, I have no idea what happened when we get to the finish. And so, you know, I don't know that this group is gonna succeed, but You know, past experience says it won't, but it can always, you know, the Peloton can blow it. They can uh, underestimate the strength of a break. There can be a crash behind. So, the, you know, these guys also are like, you know, there, something could happen back there that lets them stay away. And as I said before, you know, they're pretty much guaranteed not to win the stage if it comes to a sprint, particularly with such hungry sprinters desperate to win a stage yet. So if they weren't out here, they got no chance. They probably have no chance anyway, but you know, if you don't try, it won't happen. Same thing with making art. <laughs> if, you, if you don't try to do one painting or try to something new, it's you're not going to learn. You're not going to grow as an artist. So sticking that back under the thumbtacks. So now I'll remix that black again. start with this helmet and sort of work my way back 
through the um, painting. And I like to try to, because you know, as you saw, I just mix that color on the fly. And I never like to use a straight color. It's like, don't squeeze the tube or grab the cake or whatever and just use the color that's there. Make the color your own. I once had an instructor, I just see something else I did wrong. I stopped in time to save it. Um, this guy's bike is red. Yeah, and that's sort of making the color your own. Also, I was once told that the first four drawings of your painting or first four lines, there's the word I want it, of your painting or your drawing are the four edges of paper. Now the intention was to say, you know, fill the whole page, make it a complete image. But I, being me, kind of went, well, nobody's making my first four lines. So if you look at particular my full scale work, you will see I never go all the way to the edge. But stay inside the um, border so that I can sort of create my own. And so the same thing with the paint, you know, don't, don't let anybody else decide what your colors are, make the colors your own. All right, now, forgot the red, forgot, got confused on whose leg was who's here, so I'm gonna come back first with the flesh tone skin tone, this skin tone, their skin tone, there we go, the PC version of that. So this is kind of like two legs in one. And then here's his leg, that's his kneecap, that's the other guy's leg. Bit of that forearm there that I missed, put it in a bit of shadow. This arm I missed. Okay, now I want to hit that red. Actually, I see something else that's a problem, which is more of this bike. Clean off that brush again so my red is actually red. And he's also got a bit of red on his shorts. So I just totally blew that, didn't I? And now to do, so now just to ground it all. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I'm laughing because to ground it all, I want to paint the ground or the road. And again, I'm going to lay the brush strokes in, in the direction that the roadway is going. So as you get some, if you get any streaking, it actually helps. communicate both the speed and the direction of the road. Move my finger because I have left fingerprints on paintings before because if you put your finger in the wet paint as you're holding it down. So you will see many watercolors that tape down the edges so it holds everything in place and they don't have to worry about it. But then you get that hard white border that I don't like as I was talking before, I like to create my own edge. So that's today's painting. I know they are coming. You can see all of my cycling art at theartofcycling.blogspot.com. And of course, I love it if you give me a thumbs up, a thanks, I'd like to hear what you think. And more artwork at craigleach.com. I'll put all these links in there. And if you can't really afford to buy a painting, but like to help out, help support this, painting in these videos there is I'll give you the link for buy me a cup buy me a coffee because literally I need coffee to stay awake to keep painting these thank you all so much I really appreciate it